the shop. Pretty cool, quick, and interesting video today. My cabinet's in my kitchen. Uh, I bought my wife a cleaner for the tile to get all the darkness out of the grout. It was a light colored grout, so I bought her a high powered cleaner. We mopped the floor with it and got some on the toe kicks of the cabinets. And because it was so strong, it took off all the veneer of the cabinets and the cabinets were particle board, which were crap to begin with. So what I'm gonna do today is make them out of uh, three quarter Baltic birch ply. I'm gonna try to stain them as best I can to the original color of the cabinets. If that doesn't work out, then I'm gonna go with the glaze over that when I'm done and that'll darken it up and we should be able to match the color. So I'm gonna get started on that right now. Okay guys, here's a really quick shot of the cabinets. These are the toe kicks that, are, that were damaged here. They're just veneered particle board and they're really messed up and I'm gonna remove these first. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed the old toe kicks off camera. That's just to save some time. So now I'm cutting the bolted birch to four and a half inches. That's the size of the original toe kicks and that will make them fit just like the other ones. I'll have a little bit of play so that I'll be able to move them around when I need to nail them off with the miters. Now I have everything measured up, so I'm just going to square up one end, and then I'm going to go off of that end for as a reference, because I know it's going to be 90 degrees, and then I'm going to stand these up the same way the toe kicks are, kind of like base molding, and what I'm going to do is set my saw to the first angled cut, which is going to be 12 degrees. Okay, now the piece that I just cut off, that 12 degree angle that you saw me cut, that was going to be for the side by the dining room. And that 12 degrees to make that turn on that corner cabinet there, the actual waste piece that I cut off, I was able to flip it over and have them meet and have the perfect corner because that degree was cut by the miter. So now they make a perfect angle. And the board is long enough where I can make this 15 and an eighth long, which is the next cut on that corner cabinet. I just have to cut a 22 and a half degree angle on this end over here at 15 and an eighth inches long. And that's gonna give me my corner piece. Then I'll have to go and measure the next piece over that completes that corner cabinet. And then we can just do the straight run with the one miter against the last wall. And then we're done, put a little stain on it, let it dry, put a little finish, and nail it off. And right, now I'm gonna cut the other side of that piece. That's, this angle is gonna be 22 and a half degrees and it's gonna make up the other side of that angled cabinet there. And here I'm gonna cut the last remaining pieces here. And I just want you to know that what I did was I made a cut list. I measured all the pieces in one shot, and I took an angle finder up there to the cabinet and measured the exact angle of each piece, marked everything down on a piece of paper, come down and cut everything all in one shot. This way it's just a lot quicker and a lot easier to get everything done. Okay, now I did a dry fit and I have to stain them. So that's why you didn't see me nail anything up yet. I just did the dry fit. Here's a picture of it. And you can see in the corner here, there's some shims. That's the take up for the uneven floor. And now I brought everything back down to the shop and I'm gonna apply a mahogany gel stain on there. So I'm gonna plug in my fan, get some ventilation, throw some gloves on. Now after applying the gel stain, what I'll do is take a clean rig and I'll just wipe off any of the excess. So I let the gel stain set up and dry fully and now I can apply the finish coat which is just going to be some water-based polyurethane. I'll apply three coats of that. Okay guys, now that I have three coats of the polyurethane on there and I got the color matching as best that I could, I'm just going to pass 2000 grit sandpaper over it just to smooth out any little imperfections in this finish without taking off any of the semi-gloss. And then I'm going to bring everything upstairs and we're going to install it on the cabinets. Okay, now I can start to put everything in place and nail it off once I have all the miters and everything lined up exactly where I need them.
and I came across a piece here that needed to be shimmed out to make the miter sit perfect when I nailed it off. So in this situation, all you have to do is break a piece off of the shim, just thin enough what you need, place it behind there, and when you nail it off, you'll nail through the toe kick and the shim at the same time, securing everything. As you can see, the toe kicks that I made, the color that I used is actually slightly lighter than the actual color of the cabinets. That's because I couldn't match it exact because I don't have this color. But what I'm going to do is if it doesn't darken up within the next two weeks like it should, then I'm going to get a cherry glaze to darken it up. And I can go right over it. I don't have to remove them again. I can do it right on there, put the glaze on, wipe it off, and we should be able to match the color exact. All right, guys, so I hope you had fun. Today's video it was a pretty quick video. Uh, I think it was very informative because I'm sure this happens to a lot of people. You damage the toe kicks or part of the cabinet, and you really need to replace it. So this is a quick way to do it. Make sure you make your measurements. You draw everything out. You get an angle finder so that you can make those perfect angled cuts. If you have a corner cabinet, if you have a straight run, then, you know, it's a no-brainer. All right, guys, so uh, make sure you subscribe. Click the little picture of a bell there so you get notified every time I upload a video. And make sure you follow me on Instagram, and I'll see you guys next time.